The delightfully artistic introduction that you just suffered through was created by yours truly using Mario Paint which came out on the SNES and kind of associated consoles back in 1992. This is one of those classic Nintendo applications where there's a real focus on creativity and making things, something which you can see even to this day in their kind of inventive products and you know weird and wonderful approach to making things and initially it's almost certainly the case that they released this with an eye to placating worried parents who thought their kids brains were being rotted by the new proliferation of games consoles but whatever the reason Nintendo decided to do this it worked out really well because at the time it became incredibly popular and it's still got a cult following to this day. As well as the ability to draw things, if you don't have any kind of drawing ability, which I clearly do not, you can colour in various pre-made scenes in there. So you can, you know, colour in Mario and Yoshi without having to draw them yourself. And you can even make these wee mini animations, which is actually a really cool wee tool. And thinking about it, when this came out, there would have been no accessible way for people to do that kind of thing. So it's, it's a really nice kind of invention or creation that they came up with. The whole game is kind of littered with these kind of interesting hidden away bits. Like for example, if you just boot up the game, all you get is this screen with Mario running around and it's not obvious how you're meant to start the actual application. And the way you do it is by clicking on Mario, but he keeps running around the screen and you have to kind of figure out what to do, which is a nice way to kind of bring you into the methodology that Nintendo had with this game. And if you do click on other bits of the screen, for example, like the letters, that make up Mario Paint. They do all sorts of weird and wonderful things. So it's a nice, really well thought out, creative game, even from the outset. One of my favorite parts about it is that there's this mini game in there where you have to try and swat a bunch of flies and different insects that are trying to kill you for some unknown reason. And it sounds really crap and might actually look crap on my screen recording here, but it's actually extremely addictive. And I won't tell you how much time I kind of sunk into that whilst I was learning how to use the application. The most interesting thing for me though about Mario Paint and the whole reason that I'm doing a video on it just now is that in there there's this sound composer built in and in theory you can ostensibly make music with that in some kind of fashion. Lots of people, including Look Mum No Computer, have already done videos on this and outlets like The Verge have even made articles talking about how people create music using Mario Paint. So this isn't kind of some new or original discovery that I've made, but don't get me wrong, that's not really what I'm trying to do here. What I'm interested in doing is trying it out for myself because as a kid, I never had a SNES. I had a Game Boy, a, an N64 and then a PS1, but the SNES was one that I never got until uh, fairly recently back in 2016 and since then it's been something that I've wanted to try out for myself and I thought that now is as good a time as any to check it out and see what I could do with it. One thing I did discover when I was researching things is that there's still a fairly active community of people that make music using Mario Paint and they don't just use the original hardware or software or whatever, there are kind of recreations of these games or these applications, including one called Paint Composer, which is from someone called DanielX.net and you can get this on Steam. And it lets you kind of create music in the same style of the Mario Paint Composer, but with far less limitations. And it's actually really quite good fun to use. So that's something that might be worth checking out if you're interested in all of this. And uh, I'll probably do a separate video on that when I get the chance to try it out for myself in a bit more depth. 
For now though, I'm just going to focus on Mario Paint. And it isn't hard to find a cartridge for this if you want to try it out for yourself. But the problem is that it was designed to work with this kind of proprietary SNES mouse that they came up with really just for Mario Paint. And honestly, I had never heard of it until I started looking into Mario Paint. But you can still find these if you look on eBay and they're at okay-ish prices. But if you've ever used an old ball mouse, you'll know how terrible they always were and over time how much worse they get. And so it isn't especially the nicest thing to use and you might not want to have to seek out a dedicated mouse for the SNES just so you can try out this application. However, legend has it that there is a version of Mario Paint that you can find on the internet which allows you to use just the classic SNES gamepads and this means that you can either run it in an emulator for example, you can download it to one of those handheld Anbernic emulators or you can run it on your original SNES hardware if you've got one of the EverDrive cartridges which I happen to have. In some ways the controllers make things a wee bit harder because it's not quite as sensitive as a fully working mouse would be but it also just keeps these applications alive for people that don't have the hardware mouse and to be honest it also lets you speed up the cursor which um, is particularly handy for the fly swatting game. Now I've only ever made one track on this before, or at least one bit of music, and that was the intro theme tune that you heard at the outset, but I wanted to try and make something that I would like a wee bit more. So in this video I'm going to write some things in Mario Paint, I'm going to record them, and then I'm going to put them in other devices and kind of marry them with other sounds and different things and see what I can come up with. The very basics of how it works is that you have these different sounds along the top here which are represented by different famous and kind of less famous, shall we say, Nintendo characters. And you basically just put them along this musical stav to select different notes. They are all natural notes, which means there's no sharps and flats. It's just the kind of white keys in the keyboard. So um, everything in theory should sound like it's much more in tune. You don't have to worry too much about understanding musical theory. Or maybe it's just so that kids didn't get depressed by E minor or something like that. Whatever it is, there's 24 bars that you can customize and you know compose with, but you can also shorten and loop them using the wee repeat sign, which you've got here. There is no song mode in here, so it's basically just loop creation. And you can obviously change the tempo, but it doesn't really tell you what that relates to in terms of BPM or anything like that. The other big limitation here is that you can only have three voices at once, and you can't have more than one of the same note playing at any one time. So that means you can't have a Game Boy bleep and a car horn thingy on the same note at the same time, which is definitely a bit of a challenge. So we'll see how that works out. I'm going to go ahead now and write a bunch of patterns and through the magic of YouTube I will speed it up so that I don't bore you senseless. Okay, I've now got a pattern here that I like. I'm mostly just using the melodic sounds so that I can get the most out of the three voice limit and then afterwards I'll add on the rhythm and stuff from my drum machines or whatever. But I'm going to record this then I'm going to repeat the process so that I've got a bunch of different loops and then I'm going to take them into something like Logic and figure out the BPM and chop them up using tap tempo and all that kind of thing and then I'll see what I can do with them. As you can see there, I went through and chopped up my various loops within Logic. I figured out the tempo using a tap tempo website somewhere and then all I did was make sure that all the beats and things lined up within Logic. As it turns out, whatever uh, speed I had Mario Paint set on we equated quite nicely to 130 BPM, so that's what I've set the tempo at of this project. I'm using the Dirty Wave M8 because I find it really quick and easy to remix things. It could well be my years of using LSDJ, but that's why I'm using this this time and not something like the Akai Force, which I had kind of thought about. Now, I'll guide you through the way I've set this up so you've got an idea of what's going on. Down the left hand side here, and I apologise because you're going to here are my extra clicky M8 keys that I replaced recently. But if you go down the left hand side, I've got the six loops 
Now, I've only got six loops. I could have done a lot more. However, I wanted to sync up the loops to the video, which meant there was a whole extra kind of element that I had to consider and sync things up with. And uh, I didn't want it to get too complicated or too hard to track when I was doing this. It's already taken way longer than I thought to put this thing together. So um, if I was gonna write an actual track, then I would have more loops and more melodies and stuff. But for now, it's just six. And you can see that the patterns here, or the chains, I guess they're called, correspond to the order of the different loops that I recorded. So if I start this one, you'll see that in here my phrase is called number one, the instrument is called number one, it all lines up nicely, and that's loop one. This is loop two. Slightly different than we've got. Yeah. And you can probably hear there's a wee bit of reverb and stuff on there from the M8. Now I set this up initially so I know what the loops are in order to uh, sync to the video. Then I started messing about with some different bits here. I've added in instruments or drums. So I've, I think this is hi-hat. Yeah, we hi hat loop there. I have got, I don't know what this is. Another percussion, so a snare. This I think is a bass line. Uh, and I think there's like a kick drum. Hi, right, so this is how I have built out my track. Then what I did was gradually build up different kind of sections that I liked. And then I put it all together in this kind of song format, which if you're familiar with LSDJ or the M8, you'll understand. But this is my song. Now, I wanted to stay true to the loops and kind of make them the main constituent component. I didn't want to fuck about with them too much, but I have done a few interesting things or a few kind of, mm, I've modulated them a wee bit. So if we go into this chain, for example, this is chain 11 and that's because it is loop one, but a variation on loop one. And if we go in here, you can see that this is set to play zero one, which means that it reverses. So there is a few different weird bits and pieces in there. Uh, let's see, does this one have anything? Yeah, I also glitched things up by changing the start position. So using the STA command in the Dirty Wave M8, you can kind of chop things up manually, which is pretty good. But overall, I've kept them fairly straightforward and I've just kind of built a song around them. So I'm just gonna play through it uh, and you can hear what it sounds like. The one thing I would say actually is that when I was doing this at first, I was like, this is far too much effort to record this stuff out of Mario Paint, then have to line it all up and get it all synced and everything. But actually, it does sound pretty cool at the end, at least I think it does. And so I'll probably use this again, but I won't um, sync up the video in the same way because that really was the part that took the most time to do. If you do have a SNES, or even if you don't have a SNES, like I said, have a look for that version of Mario Paint that you can um, acquire on the internet and it will let you use the joystick or the kind of gamepad. You don't have to have the special mouse version. Let me know if you are a Mario Paint savant and I'll come check out your creations.